Welcome to another video. Now, before we get started, I really, really need you to be confident and clear and really good at solving and graphing linear, linear equations and two variables using the intercept method. So if you haven't heard that, if you're, if you're just kind of jumping into this video or you haven't really, really practiced your intercept method, stop right now watch the video before this and, and practice some of those. I, I'm not intending this video to teach you intercept method. I'm intending it to help you out when you have fractions and decimals in the intercept method. So now if we're good at that, if you've done that and, and you're, you're feeling pretty confident with it, well, let's look at these examples. The first thing I need you to understand is that these are for sure set up for intercept method. You've got a linear equation, you have variables on one side and a non-zero, that's a big one, non-zero constant on the right hand side. Same thing, you got your variables on the left-hand side. I don't care that they're out of order. I have a non-zero constant on the right. These are all gonna make lines. Even here, variables on the left-hand side, non-zero constant on the right. These are set up perfectly for intercept method. Except for one thing, you got fractions and they're nasty. And you got decimals, well those are fractions and it doesn't look great. Now, if you are okay with decimals and fractions, I always get asked this question, so I'm gonna ask it and then answer it myself. Can't you just use the cover-up method, Professor Leonard, and get the same thing? Couldn't you just divide by negative one-fourth and divide by one-third and do the intercept method directly? Yes. Could you divide by 0.5 and divide by negative 0.4 and get the intercept method directly? Yes. And if you're comfortable with that, fine, do it. I don't care. I'm just trying to make it a little easier for you. I want to make it easier by showing you this. If you remember from solving linear equations with one variable, if you have an equation, you can get rid of the fractions and decimals actually pretty easily, as long as you know something called the LCD, the lowest common denominator or least common denominator. Well, take into account all your fractions, and yeah, this one, really you could write this as a fraction, one over one if you want to, you don't really have to. Your denominator is one for that. 4, 3, and 1 are your relevant denominators. I'm going to erase this one because we don't really need it. 4, 3, and 1 are, is what I'm looking at. Find your LCD with that. Remember that if we can find an LCD, we multiply every term, that's both sides with inherent distribution, every single term by your LCD. It's going to kill your fractions. That's nice. And it allows you to see the intercept method a little bit easier. One point that we made a, a while back was if your first term is negative, move the negative to the numerator so you don't get lost anywhere. So our LCD here is, let's see, um, 4 and 3, 4, no, 8, no, 12, yes. 12 is your LCD. Because these don't share a factor, it's also the product of those two denominators. That's not always the case, but if your denominators do not share a factor besides 1, then you can multiply them to find your LCD pretty quickly. So we're going to multiply every single term, including the term that doesn't look like a fraction. Everything. You've got to do both sides. That means every term with distribution. Every single term by 12. Now, what this is intended to do is simplify your fractions. Not really even multiply. Simplify your fractions. So 4 with 12. 4 divides 12. So your fraction simplifies from 12 fourths into 3 over 1. Basically, we're... Dividing to remove your fraction and then multiplying what you have left over. So we are left with a 3. We have a negative x. 3 times negative x is negative 3x. That's what we get that. 3 divides 12 4 times. Keep your plus. 4 times y gives us 4y. On the right hand side we get 12. Now I would love for you to do the rest of the problem by yourself. I'm going to go quickly through it for your answer, but you need to try this. You need to be plugging in y equals 0 to find your x-intercept. You need to plug in an x equals 0 to find your y-intercept. You should be showing me your work. You should be writing them as points. So 0 comma y and y and x comma 0. You should be writing that out. I'm going to cheat because I, 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 re I really shouldn't have to do that work. That's up to you. You guys should do the work. Here, I, I, I will show you how to cheat though. If I want to find my x-intercept quickly, I cover up my y and I divide by negative 3 in this case. That's going to give me negative 4. By getting the negative 4, I'm really getting negative 4 comma 0 because I made the y 0. Uh, for the y-intercept, cover up my x, not that sign. Divide by 4, you get 3. That's 0, negative, sorry, 0, 3. 
we get ourselves this line, it's going to have a positive slope, isn't it? It's climbing from left to right. It's going to have a positive slope. But this method does not show you what that slope is without having to actually count up and over. So yeah, it's going to be positive 3 over 4, but you wouldn't see that in the math. Here. Looks pretty good. So that's our line. You should get something like that. Cover, negative 4 for x. Cover, positive 3 for y. We're talking about the points there. So negative 4, 0, and 0, 3. Next one. Again, could you just divide by these two numbers because we're using intercept method, cover up method, and get your intercepts? Yes. But if decimals bother you, remember that a decimal is really a fraction with a denominator of a power of 10. So 10 or 100 or 1,000 because we're in base 10 number systems. What that means is that we can easily change from decimals to whole numbers by just moving your decimal place, essentially multiplying both sides. Now that's a big deal. Both sides, all terms, by 10, move decimal 1, or 100, move twice, or 1,000, move three times, so that all of our numbers become whole numbers. What that is, though, is that if you have to move one decimal place, You've got to move a decimal place everywhere, even for numbers that are not what you would call decimal form numbers. They are all numbers of decimal form, put a decimal on them. Um, but that means that even if you don't, doesn't look like you have to move it, you have to move it. Every single term on both sides. You're basically multiplying by 10 here. That creates positive 5y minus 4x equals negative 20. And from there, you can easily see intercept method. Variables from one side, yeah, they're out of order, who cares? Right side, you have a non-zero constant we talked about in the last video. You should be at this point letting y equal zero, finding x-intercept, keeping the negative. Letting x equal zero, finding y-intercept, showing me the ordered pair that represent your x and y-intercept, and graphing your line with those two very accurate points. Here we're just going to go quickly. Um, cover up your x if you want to. Divide by 5. Notice how negative 20 divided by 5 is negative 4. So we're getting x equals 0, this is the work that I want to see, divide by 5, you get negative 4, that's 0, negative 4. That's what I mean showing work. 0, negative 4, that's your y-intercept. Do the same thing with y equals 0. If y equals 0, you're setting this equal to 0, you need to be getting negative 4x, not 4x, negative 4x equals negative 20. Watch your signs. Man, almost all errors in math, percentage-wise, are sign errors. Most of them. We need to be getting a positive 5 out of that. Could you get there from here? Sure. Is it easier looking like that? For a lot of people, yeah. So we'd have 5, 0 as your x-intercept. That's over here. Now we've shown all work. If you were in my class, this would give you 10 out of 10, for sure. <clears throat> and I'd be great on a 10-point scale, which is good. Graph your line, you're done. All you need is two. Now the last one. Last one doesn't look so bad. Hopefully you understand what we're doing so far. Same stuff as the last video. It's just I'm showing you how to get rid of fractions, how to get rid of decimals, just to make it, the math a little bit nicer for you. Now, sometimes there's no avoiding fractions. So we look at that one, it's in standard form. If I'm asking you to graph it and I don't care that you know what the slope is at this point and just graph the line as effectively as possible, that's set up pretty darn well for the intercept method. Your variables are on one side, you have a non-zero constant on the right. Remember if you had a zero on the right-hand side, intercept method works with crap. Uh, you have to solve for y to figure out the slope and then use that with the y-intercept of the origin on that. So the intercept method will work, but there's not going to be a way to avoid fraction on this. That's okay. No matter what you do, you're not going to have the ability to avoid fractions. So whether you graph an intercept method or solve for y and use points or, um, <clears throat> excuse me, or use your slope intercept, you're still going to have some fractions staring you in the face on that. So there's not really avoiding that. Intercept method still works though. So it works fine. If you let y equal 0, which gives us that negative 4x equals 8, that term's gone when the y is 0, and you divide by negative 4, we get an x-intercept 
of negative two zero, which is exactly what setting the y coordinate equals to zero has to give us, something on the x axis. Now, the weird part is when you let x equal zero. If you let x equal zero, this term's gone. You get positive three y equals eight. And hopefully you went ahead and you tried this on your own. If you divide both sides by three, there's no avoiding a y-intercept that's a fraction. You're, it's going to happen from time to time. That's okay. You can still graph with that as long as you know what 8 thirds is. If you need to change this to a mixed number and give me 2 and 2 thirds to figure it out, that's fine. I don't care. Or use a decimal on your calculator to figure out that this is like 2.67-ish. <clears throat> well, what that tells you is that you have still a, a y-intercept this case it's 0 comma 8 thirds, but it's not going to be on the grid, if you will. Here we know our, our x-intercept is, that's negative 2, 0, that looks great. But the 0, 8 thirds, well it's 0 and a positive number, it's above 2, it's less than 3, it's 2 and 2 thirds. Just estimate if you're graphing by hand. If you're on like a, a computer program that, that has you input numbers, most of them will allow you to put two and two-thirds as a y-intercept, because that is your y-intercept. If it doesn't, well, then you're going to have to find another point. And if that's the case, if you're trying to solve this with by plotting points, then you should be solving for y and plugging in some numbers that do eliminate your fraction. So in this case, you'd be dividing by 3, ultimately. Do you see it? You see if you solve for y, you'd have to add 4x and then you have to divide by 3. So you'd be plugging in numbers like 0, that's always good, 3 and 6. Those would get rid of your, your denominator of 3. Um, here we're, we're, we're looking pretty good for effective, quick graphing. That's what this does for you. Graph your line as best as you can. We'd have a positive slope. You'd have to solve for y to figure out what that slope is. That's the idea. I hope this makes sense. I hope that at this point you're feeling really good about using the intercept method when your variables are on one side and you have a non-zero constant on the other. That's when I want you to use it, to give great, accurate, effective, quick graphs. Um, next video we're going to talk about a little sidestep, horizontal and vertical lines, parallel and perpendicular lines to horizontals and verticals, what that means. Then we'll get to move on to slope and really talk specifically about slope, how to find it all the time. It's going to be kind of fun. So I'll see you for the next video for horizontal and vertical lines.